What's up, everybody? Welcome to Claiming Christianity. Hey, I recently went to a conference put on by Stand to Reason, and today I have a special video for you. It's the first of its kind on this channel because I get to interview my beautiful daughter here about her experience and what she learned as the conference was geared towards youth, geared towards the next generation. That's always the most important generation, right? Um, which is her. So I figured what better way to kind of review this conference, to encourage you guys to continue to learn and continue to teach your kids than to interview my daughter, uh, who we went to this conference together. Uh, and also, just before we get into it, uh, due to YouTube regulations, we're not able to leave comments when there's a kid in the video. Um, so I just wanted to let you know, that's why the comments are turned off, because when there is a person, I think, under 17, I think is the rules, there's not allowed to be comments. So that's why those aren't down there. Without further ado, <laughs> my darling child here, this is my oldest daughter. Why don't you tell everyone just a little bit about yourself? Okay. So my name is Lily, and I am 12 years old. I'm in seventh grade. And my favorite teacher is my dad, because he's my only teacher. <laughs> I told her that I was going to say that. The question is written down there, uh, who's your favorite teacher? And I thought it was funny, because you're homeschooled. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I wanted to give myself a little bit of a compliment here. Um, so uh, what, what was this conference? Tell us a, a little bit about, before we get into the specifics, what was this conference about? Uh, tell us a little bit about it. So this conference was a youth apologetics conference that was hosted by Biola University, but was put on by Stand to Reason. Okay, real quick, what does that mean? It, it was hosted by Biola. What is Biola? Biola is a university. It's a Christian university for college students. Yeah, there you go. And it has, I think, over like 10 majors. There's a lot of majors you can take. So we happened to be able to take a little tour before the conference, which was cool. But it was hosted by Biola, and you said put on stand, put on by Stand to Reason. Mm -hmm. What the heck is Stand to Reason? <laughs> stand to Reason is an apologetics, yeah, it's, it's a ministry. It's apologetics ministry that they have lots of podcasts, and they I think aim towards everyone, like youth and adults, and and what is their goal? Well, what is Stand to Reason's ministry? To teach people what? It's to teach Christians. Oh, okay. So to teach Christians... How... It can be how to defend your faith. How to defend your faith. There you go. So it was put on by Stand to Reason, hosted at Biola. Um, by the way, this is all stuff she knows, um, but I, we're just helping do the interview. Mm -hmm. um, so well, tell us a little bit more about this conference. You said it was put on by Stand to Reason. It was hosted by Biola. What else? And there were 2,400 students there. It was very, very busy. <laughs> very busy. Yeah. Some of us old guys struggle with the busy. <laughs> it took an hour to get lunch. But, it took, but, the, but the kids, the youth loved it, right? Yeah, it was really fun. And it was Friday night for about like three to four hours, I would say. And then all day Saturday. It ended at six on Saturday. And there's one every single year for, um, there's six around the country. So if you have any questions about that, feel free to email me or hit me up on some of the other social media since we can't do comments here. But go to str.org. I'll drop a link down in the description. But they now, this conference is so big, there's about six of them. What she was saying was that there's about six of them around the country, and they happen annually. Um, so the one in California, I think, has been going the longest. It's about 12 years now. Uh, and it's, so it's a youth-based conference that happens every year. And again, now there's six of them. So chances are, if you're living in the United States, there's one uh, within driving distance to where you are. So before we get any further and talk specifically about uh, what we learned and what we saw at the conference, you used a big old fat word that some Christians aren't aware of, and that word is apologetics. What is apologetics and why do we do it? Apologetics is defending the Christian faith um, from like worldly views. But there can also be other apologists, but we're def but Christian apologists are defending the truth. Okay. So the word apologetics means defense, mm -hmm. right? So we as Christians are, are Christian apologists, uh, but you could be in anything apologist. Um, 
I I thought when I was your age that apologetics. This is not a lie because we didn't talk about it a whole lot. Uh, I thought apologetics meant like apologizing, being <laughs> sorry. Like, what do you mean you got a whole bunch of people walk around being sorry that they're Christians? No, no, it is a defense of the Christian worldview. Where do we get this from? What is this a biblical thing? Where do we get this idea of Christian apologetics? Um, from the Bible. From the Bible. First yeah. Peter 3.15 says, But in your hearts, honor Christ the Lord as holy, always being prepared to make a defense to anyone who asks for a reason for the hope that is in you, yet do it with gentleness and respect. I like to leave the words only if you're a well-educated uh, seminary <laughs> pastor student out of that verse because, oh wait, <laughs> that doesn't say that in there, does it? No, no. The Bible just says you, if you're a Christian, this is who you are. You're an apologist. And apologetics is training that will help you better understand what you believe and what everyone around you um, believes a little better so you can have better conversations and confidence to answer your questions. Do you think that that's important for a young person today, this day in 2023 when this is being filmed, how important it is to know what you believe and be confident in that? I think it's important. Why? Very important because all because there's the world is telling you so many different things that you can choose who you want to be and you can do what you want to do, but yeah. But is that true? No, uh, that's not what we yeah. believe, right? So you kind of need to know. But there are people that do believe that's true. Mm -hmm. and we need to be able to have conversations, and this is where apologetics comes in. All right, so. Every year, the conference has a slightly different uh, theme, right? Mm -hmm. What was this year's theme, and what does the theme mean? This year's theme was called Man versus Maker, or Man or Maker, and um, it, was, it was basically about your identity. Are you going to choose to have your identity as the world and everything in the world or choose one thing or are you going to put your identity in your maker and a lot of the sessions were based off of who are you that's the number one question youth searches up today who am i who am i uh, this uh, google it uh, or or don't um if, if you look at articles and tv shows and everything around you this is the question that our society is struggling with who am i what is my truth what is your truth how do we identify and the theme of this conference was being able to not only understand that question better uh, but like she said are you going to identify with man and what who man tells you you are or with your maker and um, who your maker tells you you are, right? Mm -hmm. um, so what is, I guess, the main theme of the main theme here? Mm -hmm. The main theme is that we do have purpose and value and we're not just um, incidents that happen. <laughs> We're not just accidents. We're not just cosmic <laughs> accidents, right? Um, and if you hear nothing else in this video, hear myself and my daughter tell you, you have purpose and you have value. I don't care who you are, you have purpose and you have value. And this conference tackled that in all the keynote speeches. So there was about four keynote speeches, and that's yeah. that's what each one of the keynote speeches talked about was um, who am I and helping the young people, um, especially, not especially because it's a Christian conference, uh, Christian young people better understand who they are and who they are in Christ and how to defend that. Mm -hmm. So we were able to go to two breakout sessions, which is unfortunate. And there's yeah. a reason that it was unfortunate because there was about a dozen. Okay. So what sessions did you choose? What sessions did you not choose? Uh, kind of, and why did you choose those? Okay. So the two sessions we did choose were Greg Kokel's and tactics and about defending the faith. And we did also choose um, Christopher Yuan's, which is Holy Sexuality in the Gospel. Now, there were some ones that I did want to go to, but there's only two, which is very sad. I don't only know, go to two. I don't know why I didn't do more. But um, I, want, I did want to go to um, John Noises, which was like about suicide. And there a was a huge topic, right? 
Yeah. Like, this is a huge, huge, massive topic, and my friend John Noyce teaches that. Um, but, again, we can only pick two. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember any of the other titles, uh, even though we didn't go to them, that we had to skip? There was, just so people understand. Yeah, there was Is God a Moral Monster, too, which would the, be... The God of the Old yeah. Testament. Is yeah. he just a moral monster? Um, if I remember correctly, Robbie Lashua, one of the Standard Reason speakers, also spoke on that. Yeah. So there was a whole lot of really good sessions. I let her cho choose uh, most of these topics I'm familiar with already. Uh, and it, again, it, the conference is for her. So I let her choose Greg Kokel's tactics. Why did you choose tactics? Because I thought it would be important to figure, to learn how to defend the faith. It talked a lot about harvesters and gardeners, especially about gardeners, because there has to be someone to um, put a stone in someone's shoe, which means, um, like just putting an idea in someone's head and making them think over and over and over again about it and wanting to learn more about it. Okay. Um, this by the way is Greg Kokel's book that I just threw up on the screen there. Um, uh, if you don't have this book and you're a Christian, get it. Uh, do you remember, like, as far as the book goes, and and uh, it was all, un again, unfortunately, it was only about an hour. The breakout session was an hour, and it talked about a few things that are involved in this book here. Um, but but uh, what tactics are? What does tactics help you do? It helps you, um, like, be able to answer questions and ask questions from people, and not get stuck in a rabbit hole. No, okay. yes. So not get taken down a bunch of different, and this is easy to do, right? Uh, you're having a conversation with somebody and they want to pull you in one direction uh, because they want to pull you somewhere completely else and the conversation ends up going a little wonky. If you're not familiar with tactics, get it and read it because it will help you negotiate these tough, um, these tough conversations, help you keep them on track and help you defend uh, the Christian worldview how, if you remember correctly, uh, if you remember kind of, we only were able to go through a couple of these tactics in our hour, um, but how does he say to do that? By asking, like, what do you mean by that? By yeah. asking questions. What do you mean by that? Okay. Um, so he gave the example of, let me ask you, uh, hey, Lily, um, do you take the Bible literally? What do you mean by that? What? Good question, right? So what would you say if somebody asked you, uh, do you take the Bible literally? You might want to rattle off yes. You might want to rattle off no. If you rattle off one of those two answers, you might get a little bit stuck. But but what do you mean by, hey, Lily, are you a Calvinist? What do you mean by that? What do you mean by Calvinist? And that way you can answer the question better, right? And, and then he also went on to give us a couple of more little questions here that might help us negotiate. Do you remember kind of any of those things? Um, why do you believe what you believe? Hey, uh, Lily, you know what? Uh, the earth, I know you have your view, but the earth was basically a whole bunch of like little micro molecules that we don't know. We don't have it. They came together, <laughs> exploded. And all of a sudden we have the, the, mm -hmm. the earth and basic, basically, and we can prove that, uh, people have evolved over time and we've evolved from animals. Um, and that's what science says today. Do you believe that? Um, no, why? <laughs> I guess not. <laughs> you don't. No. But that's what I believe, and that's what I think that it, that, that's what I think is true. So you need to believe what I what I say, right? Um. No. <laughs> why do you believe that? Ah. Uh, why do you believe that? Here's the why do you believe that tactic deployed. Okay. We're not going to get too far into that today, but what most people don't know why they believe what they believe. Um, and what is the other question that he really talked to us about? Where did you get that idea? Where did you learn that? Uh, yet, yet again, this question, most people don't know, but if you really ask these questions and help, um, and, and, Listen, it can help guide your conversation. So that was the first one, Greg Kokel and Tactics. The next breakout session we went to was one of my personal uh, spiritual heroes. His name is Christopher Yuan and Holy Sexuality. Um, tell tell us about that, Lily. I'm going to throw, the, while she's talking, I'm going to throw his books up there. Okay. So Christopher Yuan is a, um, is a guy 
who um used, used to identify as a gay man, but he didn't tell anyone like throughout high school and um, college. Well, he eventually did some wrong things and got himself thrown into jail. But as he was... Federal <laughs> prison! Uh, yes, the word she's being careful with is got himself uh, through selling a whole bunch of drugs, he got himself thrown into federal prison. <laughs> keep keep yeah, going. But as he was in jail, he found this Bible. I think it was the New Testament or the... Yeah, Testament. like a Gideon's New yeah, Testament. Uh -huh. And um, he started reading that and like eventually wanted to learn more about it and got saved okay so that book that i just threw up here i'll put it up again out of a far country that is if you're interested if you're not interested by the way you may not have been listening um this is a man who throughout high school and the marine corps kept his identity to himself uh, after that, while he was in dental, dental school, identified as a gay man, ended up getting very involved in that culture, ended up, ended up uh, getting selling a bunch of drugs, getting thrown into federal prison, kicked out of dental school, found the Lord while in federal prison, um, and went straight from prison to Moody Bible College, where he is a PhD professor now uh, and teaches biblical exegesis. Uh, if that story doesn't interest you, I don't know what what will. Okay, uh, that that's that book that I just threw up um, is his story, him and his mom. So keep, continue to tell us about this session, Christopher Yuan and holy sexuality. Okay, so in the session he talked about holy sexuality, and um, I liked how he talked about um, like. You don't have to identify what the world says you are based on your attractions. And um, you can identify in Christ and not act upon those um, actions and those attractions. And not only can you identify, uh, but you should, mm -hmm. right? You should. If, you're, if you are a Christian, if your identity is in Christ, that is how we identify. Um, and this topic is is massive it is a massive major topic in our world today uh that needs to be addressed and christopher yuan in my opinion is handling it very very well and from a very unique perspective because our sexuality should be found uh in in god and in christ and who we are is identified in him not in all these other things not in all these other titles that get assigned Mm -hmm. Um, so did you like, did you like this? Did, did, did you did. like this particular, uh, did you get anything out of this particular breakout session? I did. This was definitely my favorite one. Okay. So that would lead to kind of the wrap up question here. Mm -hmm. What was the highlight of the conference for you? Definitely Christopher Yuan because his story is just so interesting. And I think what he is saying is really important. He also did talk a lot about how you shouldn't like, cringe i guess when you talk about this subject and i used to kind of just because it was weird like if it's brought up some sort of line in a movie or something it's brought up it'd be like okay this is uncomfortable but now it's like it's not that uncomfortable anymore and uh, now and i want to clarify um when you say you get a little cringy and a little uncomfortable who or what are you uncomfortable with having these discussions with who? My parents. Your parents. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I happen to be her parent, and I am <laughs> sitting here to tell you, moms and dads of the world out there, and if there is some youth watching this, fantastic. I hope there are. Um, this does not have to be a topic we hide from. Not only is it not a topic we hide from, you should not be hiding from it. It is such a big, major, massive topic in the world today and in the society that we live in. If you haven't started introducing at an age-appropriate um, level uh, the idea of sexuality and manhood and womanhood to your child by the time they're between like three and five, you're too late. It's it's already too late because the world beats you, and you don't want the world to beat you to this topic. Um, this is something that we need to be guiding our children in and guiding our young people in to help them learn the truth and to help show them God's design for holy sexuality. And I think that's, for me, why Christopher Yuan is so powerful. Uh, it definitely was a highlight for me. Mm -hmm. Also, um, and I'm glad that my kids and I can have valuable conversations about this. It's something we started 
years and years ago because we got tipped off by Josh McDowell um, to start early, to start discussing uh, body parts, you know, when you're five and six years old and using proper terminology and uh, having a relationship between moms and dads and and the children that is open so the kids come to us to ask and that when they have questions and when they're nervous they're still nervous we all were but you can come and talk to us about it and we can have a conversation knowing that um that we both are seeking christ and the lord in this and christopher yuan in his ministry again let me throw that book up there Holy Sexuality and the Gospel. This is a fantastic book that will help you do that. That will help you have those conversations with your kids. And there is also like some video video serieses. Series apostrophe. I don't know. <laughs> um, there are some videos coming out that he talked about yeah. to help you do this. To help you have these conversations with your kids. So, hey, Lily, did you enjoy this conference? I did. It was really fun. And I got a picture with Christopher you on. You did. So. I didn't think to put it up on the video. Otherwise, <laughs> yeah. I would have shared it with you all. Um, but I have met him in the past. And again, he's not only a Marine brother. Uh, we both happen to be Marines. And we are both brothers in Christ. Uh, he His story is so good. And he has such an eloquent way of explaining and expressing the gospel uh, that... Anytime he is anywhere in driving distance to where I am, I will drive there and listen to him and his mom speak because uh, he his message is that powerful, especially when it comes to the theme of this particular conference, which is who am I? Mm -hmm. um, uh, he can help a whole lot with that. Hey, I want to thank Lily for being brave enough to do this for us. <laughs> Who better to hear about a youth conference than from the youth? Um, this is who this conference we're talking about. Uh, again, a uh, man or maker put on by Stand to Reason. Um, it could be hosted in one of your areas. There's five more to go this year throughout the year. Um, so who better to hear from than her? Uh, she joined the Claiming Christianity team, which is me <laughs> and her, uh, and of course my wife, because my wife is a huge part of everything I do, so at this time it's just the three of us. She joined the Claiming Christianity team about five months ago and is the one who makes all the thumbnails for these videos. So show her some love and hit that thumbs up because you can't leave comments today. Um, but she's a huge part of what we do here at, at Claiming Christianity. And you know what? We're going to do our best to be who we claim to be and be able to defend the gospel. Even if you're a 12-year-old young lady, mm -hmm. there's no reason you can't do that. Um, if this is your first time to Claiming Christianity, I do Bible reviews content reviews, as well as opening these, those Bibles up and teaching through it uh, the truth of the Christian worldview. I hope you'll consider helping me continue in this ministry by hitting that subscribe button or even partnering with me financially um, with one of the links in the description. Check out the merch shop that's down there. That all helps uh, That all helps keep this ministry going and put these videos and this content in front of other people. Um, and by the way, the shirts are kind of fun to wear around because mm -hmm. believe it or not, they start conversations conversations like in the mall and at the do it center i am surprised at how many people will be like what's john 14 6 or i have one that says theology matters um not in my shop but and uh theology does matter so you know check that stuff out we really thank you guys for being a part of this ministry and don't forget be, be the christian, christian you, you claim, claim to be, be.